to speak on the life of the icon is a man who without mentioning his name history of showbiz in nigeria will not be complete and a former music as executive dayo olomo also joining us is a veteran in the nigerian entertainment industry charles novia hello charles hi nice to be here thank you for having Good me to have you as well um, so you you worked closely with Majek Fashek. What's how would you describe his life? Well, um, as of the time I um, got to be with Majek, that was about two thousand and five to about two thousand and ten. Was for five years. Um, he was coming out of um, what he called he, he would call a wilderness. I was saying I was in a wilderness. Sorry, I'm a little bit dramatic sometimes, but I can give you a little bit of skits of how Majek used to talk. But it was the same as a spiritual thing, I'm, I'm coming from a wilderness, you know what I'm saying? Um, he had been on hiatus um, for a while, and so when we signed him on to November record to release the album, Little Patience, he was, uh, you know, ready at that point in time to sort of bring out the, the kind of songs, the new songs that he had, which he felt was for that generation, for the millennium, because you know, it was just, we're just into the early the 2000s then. Um, it was quite a great experience um, because Majek was somebody that I got to understand and know um, in that, within that period. He was quite um, a shy, he was shy, I mean, that's not that funny thing, but I think he was a little bit shy. He was quite a shy person, even though he could be a face and you could see him and you think that he was, um, he was interacting with you. But he had a shy mien, but he also had a very deeply spiritual side. Um, he was very, very spiritual. He was, I mean, he could pray on the, with the Bible, pray, quote Psalms, do a whole lot of things. And then um, he also was prophetic, you know, and... In all of those things, he was an enigma. He was a pleasant enigma. And you, you needed to understand him to really get to know him. But those eccentricities were positive to me. Um, having worked in the movie sector too, and seen a whole lot of that too as well, and some other musicians, it was positive. But I, I, I think it was quite like then from which I'm grateful. All right. So good morning, Charles. So how do you think um, Majek's death would affect the Nigerian music industry, considering the fact that uh, we don't have a lot of people that have strong-rooted music these days? So how do you think such a person's death would affect the Nigerian music industry? Well, I think, you know, I've not, I've been trying to do, draw comparisons. I think the Nigerian music industry has been quite well right now. Uh, I think if the... If the um, in the era of Majek and uh, the Raskimonos, the reggae era, what we call the reggae era, if they had the platforms that are, are available presently, would have actually, you know, really, really been very massive, more than it we were at that time. But I think what they have to learn and the void that has been, um, the void that we, ha we have right now would be the essence of lyricism, positive lyricism, message music. Majek's music was always positive. He was talking about the African consciousness, the need to be true to your roots as Africans, the need to have a spiritual connection with God, the need to, um, you know, um, fight societal ills, you know? Those, but that was the era where they came, and it preached to a whole generation of people, including me and a, a, a lot of young people. And then he, we don't have much of that in our music. The present songs we have right now have less of what I call message, music than what they used to have. I think in hopefully post COVID, a lot of people will reset their own mindset about what they want to preach in their songs. Okay. Um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Mr. Novia, thank you for your perspective on this, but let's, let's hear what Mr. Olomo um, would say about Majek Fashek. How, how would you describe his life? Uh, I think more than anything, Majek's life needs to be celebrated. Uh, and I'll tell you my relationship with Majek. I was there when Majek started. I was the, in 1990, I was the promo, I was the head of media relations and protocol of DP Lecky, the organizer of the biggest um, festival in Nigeria then. And we had the opportunity to contract Majek 
for for a show at Lekki at Lekki Beach, and it was my responsibility to go and pick Majek at home. In fact, surprisingly, he was living at Majek Odumi Street around Ikeja that time, and his son was his son name is Majek Odumi, and. Uh, I see Majek as an enigma, somebody who has come a long way. I was there when he released his first record, when he was with Justice, Justice Band, yes. Then before he signed on to Tabansu Record, I was there. Then when I remember in those days, anytime Majek is going on stage, it will rain. In 1990, during the, uh, there is this musical festival that was organized by Chief Onka Kalu. His name, Chief Onka Kalu, one of the biggest um, musical festival then. When Majek was to play, Majek, he came in around about five o'clock and it started raining. When he also went to America, his first show in Nigeria at um, Night Shifts, I was I was there when he was singing um, without you. So I've been there when he sang on with um, Sony Music. I was there. So I've been with Majek for about uh, maybe ten years as a close friend and a brother. And my brother just said something about Majek. Majek is a very very spiritual person. Majek is very very deep in uh, in his religiosity in his spirituality. Maybe because he comes from an Aladura background. And that Aladura background reflected uh, in his prayer, in his prayer life. So he's very, very heavy on Psalms. Um, it was, it, it will pray, and anytime he's going on stage, he will put on, he will put on, um, um, he, will, he will be ringing the bell, and he will say, "It's an eleven. Repent, for the kingdom of Jah is at hand." That's the way he goes on stage. It's very, very dramatic. He has messages. Every of Majek's song has messages. Send down the rain without you, Pangolo. Uh, uh, and he's very, very, and he plays very good guitar. So he's go, he will go on stage, play the guitar. But, you and uh, Mr. Uh, Novia. Also, also that done. Yes. You and Mr. Novia have used um, one word in common, which is that he's an enigma. Um, but I would like to ask on behalf of a lot of youths out there who would know Magic as an icon of, of an icon of some sort. Um, what would you say we should pick out of his life? Because of course he had his ups, his downs. We saw it play out, and he still remains an icon. But what do we take out from his life? I think more than anything, uh, we should celebrate. We should look at Magic in his entire totality. We should celebrate the good he has brought to the music industry. When you look at his album, his artistic, um, how hard work he is, I think we should embrace that. And most importantly for musicians, we should begin to sing music that has got message. When you look at the generation of Majek, I happen to, to promote Rastimono's um, Under Pressure. When you look at those songs, when you look at Oris Wiliki, when you look at Evierna Ogoli, when you look at Blackie, they have a lot of songs, even um, Sonny Neji. So for a lot of musicians, it will be having a core message. Let's know what to stand for. And for all the others, it is just looking at when we get to a pattern peak in our life, we just need to be mindful of where we are going because my message more than anything will be, it is not getting to the top that matters, but it is how you remain at the top. I think that would be my message. All right, so um, Mr. Charles, so on your end, personally, what would you be doing to protect his legacy and make sure the fire keeps burning? Well, um, when, I, when he was under the record label, he gave me the rights to a biopic on him, um, to shoot a film on him, a bio, a bio movie. And we are started all the planning, I've written the script, which he approved, and I've gone to America, um, talked to a couple of um, guys in Hollywood that we were about to shoot. So I had cast Francis Duro back then, 2006, to play Majek. And because um, Francis had that, that uh, the, the height and a little bit of the look, so he was losing weight and letting the guitar. But somewhere along the line, we couldn't trace the kind of funds needed for that, because mm. it was supposed to be an international biopic to be shot on 35mm back then. But, 
it's something that I think um, for in, for the generation that we have right now, the generation mm -hmm. that knew him, that I think is a project that I think I want to carry on and do, and I'm going to re react. And what would the title right be? Say it again, please. What would the title be of the bi biopic? Well, it was called The Rainmaker, The Magic Fashek Story. That was all it called. That's, that's the title. Rainmaker, The Magic Fashek Story. Mm -hmm. uh, because he told me a whole lot of things. And, well, I think he was scared a little bit at one time. He was scared that, you know, uh, so there's something very uncanny, he said. So he was scared when we were about to He called me one day and said, you know this biopic you're going to do? Forget it. Shoot it when I'm dead. Hmm. And I said, no, come on. I'm not going to shoot it. That. People need to know when you are, see you. And I said, no, shoot it when I'm dead. And I just remembered that this morning when I, when I heard the news. And I'm like, you know, um, then he, he, this guy is, uh, it was, like I said, spiritual. He was a prophetic kind of person. And so now I'm thinking, okay, fine. You know, let's see how we can get work done on that. As a Nigerian in the diaspora, the, the most important thing I owe the world in terms of magic is to look at the total history, the story of magic. Because if we are not very, very careful, people will be looking at magic in the last five to 10 years or 15 years. But if we look at magic, where is coming from? What lesson can we learn from magic? And when they are doing the magic narrative, we should be looking at everything. So just it's, it's about correcting it. For example, um, I'm a motivational speaker in the UK. I'm well known in the UK. But most people don't even know my story. In, uh, of my story in the Nigerian music industry. Um, how in the 80s and 90s. So now I am in a place that I can say, no, don't look at magic from that. Three people have called me this morning before I got a call from K when I was um, out jogging. And they said, oh, my Jack, um, they were talking about my Jack of the current my Jack. And I said, no, 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 no. Look at my Jack from his days at Justice, um, from his days at Tabansi. Then look at when he went to America. When he came back, his contribution to the Nigerian music industry. When you look at Majek's reggae, you discover that his reggae is different from Raskimono's reggae, it's different from Oris Wiliki's reggae. I, 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 in fact, I put him in the, in the realm of Lucky Dube. When you look at Lucky Dube's reggae in those days, it's different from, it's different from Bob Marley's reggae. His, his reggae is very, very rooted in his South African Zulu culture. Whereas uh, Majek's reggae is very, very rooted in his religious beliefs, in his Christian beliefs, and in his Benin roots. Mm. All right, thank you very let, much. Let, let's talk about, um, before we go, this will be to Charles as well. Let's talk about the ability of our icons to actually evolve into being able to make um, uh, money from their craft and their evergreen music digitally. What do you think is playing out in that space? Well, you're talking about royalties. But if I, I liken that to Majek, Majek um, still, was still getting royalties from some of his songs because some of those songs that were released and published on the interscope and sony music and you know i mean you're still getting royalties um which is which was mean which means there's a structure internationally for him um what we need to if we were here is the same template um, we need to have a collective societies more empowered and more transparent so that artists um uh, you know can get the, the the residual value of what they've, they've, they've created over the years um and those things come in handy when you are getting to your old age and that's what most people don't understand but mercifully, and uh, you know, it, we've seen many of the artists that have been signed on. We've seen a, a, an inflow of Sony Music, Universal Music, Warner Brothers Music coming in, signing Bonner Boys, Davido, and uh, the, the Bonner Boys, Davidos, and the mm -hmm. Whiskey. And that is that means there's a there's a structure which, which those labels or those companies are going to put in place, which we will have to follow, which we will have to learn on the lookout scene. So I think artists have to learn, do not live for the day but plan for the rainy day through your works. Mm. You know, your works are very important. Do not, do not dismiss the value of what you think you have and plan for the rainy day. All right, thank you thank so you. much, Mr. Novi and Mr. Olomu for celebrating the life of Majek Fashek with us. Thank you. Yo.
Okay. I mean, it was, of course, a rude shock this morning. Mm, very. Send down the rain, little patience. Those were songs I listened to growing up. And yeah, I was going to ask them their favorite Magic Fishek songs, yeah. though, but we're running out of time. Mm -hmm. But personally, what's your favorite Magic Fishek song? It has to be Little Patience. I think so, yeah. too. Mm -hmm. That has to be mine, too. Um, but uh, the thing about Magic, I'm actually looking forward to that biopic because a lot Definitely. of people do not know a lot about his life and what is being true and all of that. So we'll like to see all of that play out and let's see how it goes. Right. May so rest in perfect peace. Amen.